today we're going to discuss a very exciting topic, which is what separates a good from a great config manager. Hi, I'm Alex and I'm the Managing Director at Ainland Partners. And for the past years, we worked with many organizations when it comes to the art of config management. Yet, it's difficult to find tangible tips around how you really succeed in your internal role. So for that reason, we created this video of the four key essential strategies that you need to know to do kick-ass config management. Come with us. Before anything else, let's first have a look at what a config manager actually does. We'll have a look at both the formal and the informal definitions. But first, I need some slides to help me. Let's have a look at the roles and main responsibilities. Keep in mind that this is a simplified version. Starting with the configuration manager. This is typically a person who is very involved in the day-to-day -day operational task, such as the data loading. This could be an individual who oversees integrations, import jobs, sometimes even discovery jobs, but also assist in documenting where does the data come from and what is the expected frequency on the data into the system. And speaking of data, data quality is equally important. The configuration manager tends to work with different stakeholder groups to produce audits, configure health rules such as what are the required attributes, what are the recommended attributes, but they also monitor and make sure that no configuration items, for example, go stale or that we don't see any duplicates in the system. Last but not least, we have the reporting part. The configuration manager tends to create meaningful reports to different stakeholder groups. It could be sent on a regular basis, for example, what is the trends regarding incidents for our particular CIs, what is currently going on in the change management landscape, and other sort of meaningful business intelligence. And also helping configuring dashboards. It's very common that the config manager helps different groups of people set up meaningful dashboards that they can utilize in their day-to-day -day business. Let's now have a look at the CMDB process or product owner. We can immediately see here that this is a bit more of a strategic perspective. For example, creating the configuration management plan and process, producing long-term roadmaps and painting the dot on the horizon, correlating the CMDB to relevant use cases for the business, and also tying it to strategic mission targets typically dictated by management. At the same time, the process owner is also responsible for designing the overall CMDB to scope it, what should be included, what should not be included, what sort of metadata or what sort of attributes are important and what is critical or not. Also the governance aspect, how is this maintained over time and by whom, and how do we ensure the data quality? And last but not least, how do we interface to other processes to really generate full value of the CMDB? But we also have enablement. Enablement is critical as a CMDB process owner to provide valuable training and mentorship to the organization, but also being able to produce good propositions of why departments should use the CMDB and what is the value behind it. Keep in mind that these roles sometimes might overlap depending on the organization. So let's go to the Einar and Partner Studio to have a little chat and introduce our guest speaker who has a few sentences about this topic. We've spoken now a lot about process ownership versus a config manager. Now, these lines can get a little bit blurry. So for that purpose, Katarzyna, first of all, welcome to the Einar and Partner Studio. Now, you have a lot of experience when it comes to config management. Is this something you recognize as well? Pleasure to be here. I do have experience working as a config uh, manager and before that as a CMDB owner. It is something that can be blurry, especially depending on the size and or maturity of organization. It's never black or white to distinguish. The first key essential tip that we like to give is focus on your diplomacy skills. It might sound counterintuitive, because config management implies a very technical role, perhaps. But that's not always true. You see, you as a config manager should absolutely have the ability to see where can I fit in configuration management 
within the organization. And to do this, you need to form relationships, you need to know the values, and really speak on the behalf of config management. So, on this topic of diplomacy, we often hear that the role of a config manager is a tactical one. But your perception is also that it contains strategic elements, which I absolutely agree upon. Could you expand more upon that? The config manager role is a tactical role. Um, you are the owner of CMP's uh, configuration management plan and you should drive CMDB roadmap. But also, it's, in my opinion, within your responsibility or within your gut to have this proactiveness towards um, IT enterprise and to drive CMDB strategy if the organization is evolving it or not fully know which way to go with CMDB. You have the best visibility and umbrella visibility of IT enterprise and what you want to do with CMDB as a product and the data layer and how it can be later used in an organization. Being able to really articulate the value of the CMDB, that's one of these mistakes that are commonly being repeated. Uh, if you go back a couple of years, the first time that you started working with the CMDB, what is that advice that you could give to, your, give to yourself when it comes to the value? Focus on the data model and data model quality. Uh, data model quality and data model gives you this linkage to life cycle and processes. So if you have good enough data model and you know how to manage that and mm, use all the best practices for the data model governance, you have trustworthy data and uh, they are more easily to be used in other, not only ITSM, but you know, vulnerability processes, um, APMs, TPMs, there's a lot that, that you can do with CMDB data, not only for the operational perspective. So focus on the CMDB data governance model. So start from properly ingest the data, work on the reconciliation of the data, uh, then focus on the data lifecycle. And when you are ready with that free, go to data, uh, data completeness and then to data audit. Okay, yeah, no, I think that's excellent tips. And to add to that, another thing which I have seen is commonly missed as well is not really being able to tie the CMDB to relevant business objectives of the organization. And I see you're laughing because I bet that you agree here a little bit, right? I do. So CMDB, it's a big topic and it also has a lot of data. So one of the tricks is to get focus on whatever organization needs uh, in short and long term. So if you can, please find um, IT strategy. If the organization is still evolving IT strategy, go into every IT tower and try to get strat plans from them, especially IT infrastructure and application strat plans. Maybe you can go to um, enterprise architects because they know what kind of application are going to be developed. Uh, go to you know, infra guys to get to understanding its organization to be focusing more on data center side or cloud side. You, this way you can attach CMDB data and what you're working on and the roadmap for CMDB with what actually organization needs for a couple of years. Having other people to maintain the data quality is perhaps the most difficult part. Now, how do we succeed with this then? We have to work with both the carrot and the stick and I'll show you how. How to get people to do their part. So, on the left side here, we can see some examples of using the so-called stick. It could be a variant of, we're sorry, but we're not receiving or correlating event data in the CMDB from what we believe is your application, so we cannot offer you premium level of monitoring. But it could also be other things, such as we don't have ownerships for your resources, so we can't offer you a vulnerability assessment, or that perhaps they are receiving a more expensive bill because we are lacking some critical and necessary metadata on their infrastructure. In an inverse way, on the right side here, we see some examples of using the carrot instead. And this is all about simplicity. Having people to do a very small amount of effort to gain a lot of value. For example, 
just fill in these tags and security will pick you up, or just confirm these attributes once per month with a few simple clicks and we'll give you the highest level of support. Something else that we've seen been used successfully is trying to do a sort of gamification of the data quality, for example with the certifications. And we have also seen examples of companies actually carrying data accuracy as an objective across departments. So keep these tips in mind for how you can balance the carrot and the stick in order to promote a better data quality within your organization. With the evening coming to an end here in Amsterdam, I hope that you really found this video useful and that, that you can apply some of these aspects in your daily job. Uh, don't forget to follow Ailerum Partners on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep on following our updates because we'll come out with a lot more videos moving forward. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.